Ever thought about the safety measures while using your DIY fire pit? It's an essential question, one that can make the difference between a delightful evening under the stars, or an unfortunate mishap. Fire pit safety is paramount, as the risks of not adhering to safety measures can be significant. A stray spark, an unstable base or unattended flames can quickly turn a serene setting into a hazardous situation. In this video we'll focus on three key safety aspects that you need to consider when using your DIY fire pit. First we'll discuss how to select the perfect location for your fire pit, a place that's both safe and enjoyable. Next we'll talk about how to control the fire, ensuring it remains a warm glow and not a raging inferno. And finally, we'll cover the post-fire procedures, steps that help ensure your fire pit is ready for its next use. Stay tuned as we delve into these crucial safety tips for your DIY fire pit. The first step in ensuring safety around your fire pit is selecting the right location. Now, you might be wondering, why does location matter? Well, it's simple. Your fire pit needs to be placed at a safe distance from any flammable materials. This includes trees, wooden decks, and sheds. Even a stray spark can cause a major fire incident, and we certainly don't want that, do we? But that's not all. The surface on which the fire pit is placed is equally important. A flat, stable surface is essential to prevent the fire pit from tipping over. Can you imagine the chaos if a fire pit full of burning wood suddenly tipped over? Yeah, let's avoid that scenario. Lastly, don't forget to consider the wind direction. A gust of wind can blow embers into areas where they shouldn't be, which can be a potential fire hazard. Remember, a good location is the first line of defense against fire accidents. Now that you have the perfect location, let's talk about how to control your fire. You see, managing the size of your fire is a pivotal part of fire pit safety. A smaller, manageable fire not only reduces the risk of accidental spread but also makes for a more enjoyable experience. To ensure a cleaner burn, always opt for dry, seasoned wood. This type of wood produces less smoke and burns more efficiently. Now let's discuss safety tools. Having a fire extinguisher or a water source nearby is non-negotiable. This gives you the ability to quickly react in case of unexpected flare-ups. Lastly, let's tackle a common misconception. Using gasoline or lighter fluid to start or boost your fire is a big no-no. These substances can lead to uncontrollable fires and pose serious safety risks. Fire control is crucial in preventing unexpected flare-ups and maintaining a safe environment around your DIY fire pit. Finally, we must never forget about post-fire procedures. Now, you might be thinking, the fire's out, what's left to do? Well, there's a lot more to it than it seems. The importance of fully extinguishing the fire before leaving it unattended cannot be overstated. This is not just about pouring a bucket of water on the flames, it's about drowning the fire, making sure every last ember is soaked. But we're not done yet. Stir the ashes, break up any chunks. You want to ensure that there are no hot embers hiding beneath the surface. This is crucial in making sure that the fire doesn't reignite. Now, what about that leftover wood? Don't just leave it lying around. Store it in a dry place, well away from the fire pit. This prevents accidental ignition and keeps the wood ready for your next fire. By following these post-fire procedures, you can ensure the fire is completely out and the area is safe. 